In this last video on improper integrals, we're going to look at one example of an improper integral and then look at how to use the comparison test. So if we look at this example, the integral from minus 1 to 2 of 1 over x cubed dx, on face value it looks like a quick and easy find the antiderivative and substitute in, but we cannot use the fundamental of theorem of calculus here because this function 1 over x cubed, as we can see in the sketch, is undefined here where x is equal to 0. So I need to anticipate what happens where x is equal to 0, and so we saw in the previous video how to treat that. So we're going to look at the limit as t approaches 0 of the integral from minus 1 to t. So if we're going from values smaller than t, smaller than 0, towards t from minus 1 to t, so we're approaching 0 from the negative side of 1 over x cubed dx, plus the limit as b approaches 0, so now I'm going from b to 2, so I'm approaching 0 from the positive side of 1 over x cubed dx. So what we have is the limit as t approaches 0 from the negative side. The antiderivative of x to the power minus 3 is minus a half x to the power minus 2, or 1 over minus 2 x squared, between t and minus 1, plus the limit as b approaches 0 from the positive side, of minus 1 over 2x squared between 2 and b. So we have the limit as t approaches 0 from the negative side of minus 1 over 2t squared. If I substitute minus 1 in there, that'll become 1. So minus, so it becomes plus a half. Plus the limit as b approaches 0 from the positive side. If I substitute 2 in there, I've got minus 1 over 2 times 4, so it's minus 1 over 8, minus, if I substitute b in there, I've got 1 over 2b squared. All right, now both these limits, if we look at the limit values, we both have a denominator that tends towards 0, which means the whole number is tending towards infinity, or negative infinity in this case, so the denominator gets very, very small, so the numerators get very, very, well, the, the whole number gets very, very big, tending to a big value. So in this case, it's going towards the minus in front, but that whole fraction goes towards infinity. So this, these limits does not, neither of them exist. So therefore, we can conclude that the integral from minus 1 to 2 of 1 over x cubed dx is divergent. All right, so that gets us to the comparison test. So let's take a look at what it says. The comparison test tells me that if I've got two functions that are continuous over a to infinity, so it's from a fixed value, it doesn't have to be a positive value a, but just a real number a, and my function values are positive. So if I sketch them, they are both above the x-axis. So let's draw. We know from this information, we've got f of x somewhere over there, and g of x somewhere over there. So whatever they look like, they're continuous from a to infinity. That's what the function looks like. So what does the comparison test tell me? It says that if the integral from a to infinity, so let's put a over here, if the area under the curve for x, f of x, so if this region under the curve for f of x, if I know that region is divergent, so I can't calculate that region then I definitely can't calculate the region above g, because f is lower than g. So if I can't get the region under f, I definitely can't get the region under g. All right. Similarly, on the other flip side, if the region under g can be calculated, all right, so let's say I can calculate the whole region under g, and f is below g, then I can definitely calculate the region under f, and that'll be less than or equal to the area under g. So that's what the comparison test tells me. So we're looking at comparing two functions. If the function that's, can I say, above the other function on the Cartesian plane, if that one is convergent, then the lower function is also convergent. Or, similarly, if the function that's below, but still positive, if that function is divergent, then the higher function is definitely divergent. So let's look at two examples on how to use the comparison test. Now remember, if I can simply find the integral, if you can do the calculation with the limits to see if it's what the value is, whether it converges or diverges, you can do that. But if we specifically ask to use the comparison test, 
then we look at comparing integrals. And this will happen in cases, for example, where the integral isn't easy to calculate. So I just want to look at it and see, well, can I calculate this? Not so easy, but can I have in some information on this integral? Now, when we do a comparison test, we obviously have to compare with something that we're familiar with. Now, one of the integrals that we're familiar with, that we've looked at, is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the power p dx. We saw if p is greater than 1, it's convergent. And if p is less than or equal to 1, it's divergent. So in this case, we're going to compare it to this theorem. So that's something we already know. So what are we comparing it to? Well, this plus 5 is what's the problem. I'm going to look at the square root of x cubed. If I had to compare that to the square root of x cubed plus 5. Now take note, we're going from 1 to infinity. So I know x is greater than or equal to 1. So I know x is greater than or equal to 1. So how do I compare that, those two? Well, the square root of x cubed must definitely be less than the other one because we're adding something to it. But if that's the case, then 1 over the square root of x cubed must be greater than 1 over the square root of x cubed plus 5. All right. Now, 1 over x is greater than or equal to 1. So I know that this is definitely going to be greater than 0. So I've got positive functions. So this function is less than this function. Do I know something about this function? Yes, we, all, we know that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x cubed, because remember that's x to the power 3 over 2, so it falls into this category. dx is convergent. So therefore, from this comparison comparison test, we can say the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over the root of x cubed plus 5 dx is also convergent. All right, let's look at another one. The integral from 4 to infinity of 1 over lin t minus t. This one's not so obvious what we're comparing it to, but I will show you. I'm going to compare it to 1 over x. I'm going to look at the function 1 over x. Now, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx is divergent. So therefore, we can assume that the integral from 4 to infinity, because it's not the 1 and the 4 that makes the problems. It's that I'm going all the way to infinity. So the integral from 4 to infinity of 1 over x dx is also divergent. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch. If this is y equal to x, y equal to lin x over here. If you compare the two, there's a relationship. So for x greater than or equal to 4, I can see that lin of x is always going to be less than x for all values of x greater than or equal to 4. All right. So that means 1 over, well, let's take it one step further. Let's then say, what about lin x minus 1? Well, if x is going to, if lin x is less than x, then lin x minus 1 must be less than x, because it's even smaller than lin x. So therefore, 1 over lin x minus 1 must be greater than 1 over x. But also, I know that 1 over, let me just write it here, also 1 over lin x minus 1 is still positive. So for values of x greater than or equal to 4, that will definitely be positive. Because if x is equal to 1, lin x minus 1 will be negative. But as we go further, that will definitely be positive. So therefore, I've got a function that's bigger than a function that I know is divergent. So from the comparison test, we can make the conclusion that the integral from 4 to infinity of 1 over lin t minus 1 dt. Now, see, I've been looking at x's all along, but whether I'm talking about x or t, that doesn't matter. When we go back and answer the question, we go back to our original question. So 1 over lin t dt will be divergent. And that is the comparison test for improper integrals.